Yeah, let's do it. Well, I don't know why I'm listening tonight. I got a feeling that the cards just ain't right. I'm so salty, must not give in to rage. And I'm wondering what those rollers will say. Scarves to the left of me, cheaters to the right. Here I am, gonna roll a derby tonight. Gonna roll a derby tonight. Gonna roll a derby tonight. Yeah, welcome to the Hidden City Roller Derby. I'm your host, Simkoff, and I've got three of the best rollers with me tonight. How's it going, fellas? Doing all right. Good. Good. Hello. Good to hear. <laughs> Good to hear. I love, so, I love the uh, the intro music. Definitely, definitely How much do we have to pay to get that done? <laughs> <laughs> well, lucky it was done by my wife in about five minutes, about an hour ago. <laughs> She's good like that. Other, 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 other podcasts, uh, <laughs> they strive for drums. You know, the the the, the beating of a drum, or uh, but we've got uh, we've got lyrics, uh, we've got high production values here here in Australia. The court has been thrown. Hey, hey, other podcasts. Like West World in Japan is try and try and up us on an intro song and not one that you bought royalty free on some internet site i mean like legit home recorded <laughs> lo-fi lo-fi again yeah man it was just one mic lo-fi and... high fidelity openings <laughs> oh, God. right so uh today who have we got? We've got we've got the uh, the mad bearded ha- uh, Matamoto himself, Merlin. What's going on, mm-hmm. brother? Not a lot. Uh, practicing foils, all that good stuff. Perfect. Hopefully, more streaming. Actually, really enjoying the streaming. We've got Remedy, aka Glenn, who's usually joining us from the outback, but he's a city slicker today. I think you're actually in a house. City slicker? Uh, no, I'm in. I'm in my shack. Uh, out of the middle of nowhere. Um, this wall behind me, uh, well, we're in podcast form, but basically there's one wall behind me, one wall in front of me. That's about all I've got going for me. <laughs> uh, and the crazy Canuck, how's it going, Grinder? Hey, I'm good. Awesome. Right. Big week in L5R. Lots of See, Chris sounds more remote than I do. <laughs> I'm in Flemington, I might as well be. <laughs> Flemington is attached to Melbourne for those of you who don't know. Although when you're there it feels like it's miles away. It's like separated yeah, exactly. by a tram lane. <laughs> so right. if you go out with your cards for the for the weekend, you risk losing them. Yeah, it's just one of those risky suburbs, you know what I mean? Yeah. Is that your cards right. or your cars? Both, I think. Your cards. It's like, <laughs> both, it's yeah, like if your life was maze of illusion. That's, that's <laughs> you just roll the dice. <laughs> you just put the point every time you pass someone. <laughs> some days you get out and dishonored, and some days are fine. <laughs> that's right. That's the ceiling. So we've had a pretty controversial week here at uh, Hidden City Central. Is a few of us uh, played the World Cup. Uh, last week, or recently, and uh, there were some issues with some clocks and some. The stream went alright, but like I think uh, poor Grinder and myself uh, didn't really know how to set up games. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. I like to play casual, like over a beer. <laughs> <laughs> this whole hyper competitive World Cup thing is a bit odd. Yeah, having actually set my game up, like if there's no tokens involved, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I think what you can actually it's do though, right? Can be it... <laughs> Just mirror, right? Like the deck lists are open, so have like on your bed next to your computer. Just have two physical decks assembled, and then as like things update on Jigaku, <laughs> like update the decks. <laughs> have a physical like version. Playing... Of... Sound like playing chess by mail or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love a good play by my. I thought I thought Simkov. I thought you were going the route of just have your opponent's deck 
was by the, by your bedside and just point at the card that they don't have in their in their in their, in their deck list. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> just wait, just wait at the game and point they... and be like, oh, I got it. That's what I thought you guys were doing. You guys were so quick on that that that's not a card in your deck. I thought one of you was like just staring at the deck list, going, "Yeah, that one's okay. Yeah, yeah. that one's okay." I oh, studied my no, opponent's that was deck, <laughs> and I was like, "Blackmail! That ain't no card in your oh. deck." <laughs> Surely that can't be in your deck. You're currently yeah. beating me. You're not playing blackmail. Aha! You don't have it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think that I'm hoping that we as a nation can make it through out of the group stage on defaults and just like conceits and <laughs> DQs. <laughs> <laughs> like no legitimate wins. <laughs> that'd be brilliant. that'd be the best. It, Can you imagine if that happened? Fine. It kind of <laughs> it sounds, sounds like a typical like Australian plan. World well, Cup, though. Well, like Australia's <laughs> success. We we always either like you know in the Winter Olympics everyone else falls over and we win oh. gold at, at ice skating. It's um, the greatest moment you know, in Australian, Australian sporting Cup. history. <laughs> yep. Good just she'll be right. Just just the she'll be right attitude. You know, we'll be all right. We'll get through. <laughs> yeah, just just YouTube like Winter Olympics ice skating Australia, and there's just the greatest clip of <laughs> of us slaughtering Canadians who are, can actually ice skate and people from you know <laughs> like the Baltic region, <laughs> Scandies or something. Country, countries that have snow. Yeah, <laughs> hey, we have snow. Not really. We do have snow in the mountains. I'm sure where Glenn lives, there's snow and snow and all all winter. Is it snowing right now, Glenn? Um, no, but last weekend it did. Shack. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it's actually been one of the. I think it's the third on record best snow season uh, for those of you uh, in Melbourne. But uh, what does snow have to do with L5R cards? You may ask. Well, there is a snow ninja, so there is a thematic tie. And uh, as you like to know, we like to take theme to the extreme and talk about uh, you know, the reality of some cards. Is Miyaku hiding out here in, in, in the, snow, the snow mountains of Australia? Who knows? Um, I'd, also say, I'd also say that you know, Ben's win is quite thematic of a Scorpion player. Uh, one player thematically revealed too much information and so was punished by, you know, politically by breaking the rules. <laughs> <laughs> the sad thing is, like, I am ninety nine percent sure that like I was done. I was cooked like a goose in that yeah. game. <laughs> yeah. Cook. If he doesn't play that card, if he doesn't play that card, I'm pretty oh. sure that he wins. Yeah. But then, then he <laughs> plays the card and gets DQ'd. <laughs> <laughs> so you get further. So like how's that. uh how how have you guys found covering the uh, World Cup? Otherwise, uh, I've, I see that. Um, it seems like we as a team have decided to try and cover more and push more. And how have you guys been finding that over the past week? Merlin's done a great job. Do you want to talk about like casting and streaming and all that sort of stuff, Merlin? Because you seem to have just stepped up, become the leader oh, for Australia and that. Um, I've actually really enjoyed it. Um, I really am... <laughs> I guess it's been a bit of a rough start, to be completely honest with you. The first two games that we played were over at Chris's place. Like uh, and cast from Chris's place, and getting all that set up, I was like tripping over cables, and we couldn't quite get things set up. And then eventually, when we did get it set up, all the audio is pitched down. <laughs> so there's that. And then um, when I got the setup here at home going on, the very first game that I cast was an absolutely tremendous game, right? Like it was, it was one of those games where you're going to talk about it with your friends, you know, if you were there watching it, but. I didn't save the VOD. So, oh, so there's now, there's no, nothing except for a single screenshot of that game. Which game was that one? That it even really happened. Uh, that was Burt's Dragon oh, vs. No. Dragon. The Toridori vs. Yeah, QQ game. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Do you want to maybe just so tell you us... You solidified it into myth before it actually, before it actually became myth. It, it's now a myth. <laughs> it's now officially that, myth. Uh, so yeah. NZ and I... Tale. Yeah. <clears throat> I just, and I the rumor were, I heard, just to build hype, yeah. is the sixty. Was there sixty cards in hand between two players yeah. at some point? Yeah, yeah, something like that. So, so it's like, like playing with your deck from hand. You just pick up your deck <laughs> and hold it in your hand. If you're was, like, was, I'm going to play this. There was card 19, 19 fate on rings at one point. Like there were there were three rings with three fate and one ring with four fates. 
<laughs> Sorry, five, five fate. Three rigs with five fate and one rig with four fate. The grinder and myself being uh, Toradori or Birdie's teammate, we were sitting uh, in a different room, sequestered away, and just looking at this insanity. And Bert's asking us, can I attack now? And we're like, no. I don't think so. Yeah, what was right. that like? What did you feel, Enzi, like being the coach on the end of the line for world class Toridori? Like, that was pretty crazy, right? It was pretty intense. I mean, I didn't say very much. I kind of let the two of you just hammer it out. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there wasn't much to do to pass. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's we interesting. Really that game. Game. The most that felt like um, an old L5R game that just got away. <laughs> where you're just like, everybody's buying characters and passing through. Because nobody, it, until they draw that rallying cry, they're like, I'm not committing anything. They're like, oh, okay, I've got the answer so I can attack and stay straight the whole army and just crush you that way. <laughs> Only yeah. Bird had a rallying cry. That's Would've right. Fun. <laughs> that was such such a good game. Um but I am I am talking well with Twitch. It's a little bit of a one sided conversation at the moment to see if I can get the VOD back, but yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so for those of you that didn't catch the game or know what the hell we're talking about, QQ who won the last Discord World Cup and Bird Toridori, who came second a couple of Discord Cups ago and has won lots of tournaments and pretty good player himself. Both playing Tier zero, tier like god tier dragon with the crab splash and all of that gross row nonsense, feast of famine, resto, etc. And they were just passing because the challenge was when you're drawing five every turn, if you can't get a pathfinder blade to stick, because like every time someone put a pathfinder down, the other person would let go, then, well, you know, you just pass. And because deck lists were open, both players knew the opponent didn't have assassinations, and because that meant that they brought out their Agasha Swordsmiths with like three fate, four fate, so the Swordsmiths mm -hmm. are just drawing cards every turn. So both players had intense hand sizes. And to give you an idea of the unique sort of strategy that Enzi and Bert and myself were talking about, which I'm sure was happening on the other end, but in Polish, was <laughs> we were actually looking at how can we curate a discard pile because the discard pile is so small right if you got 30 odd cans in your, cards in your hand we knew that we were going to have to reshuffle and draw shortly and um yeah so on that game is like it was how do we get the right discard pile uh so that when we have to reshuffle we know we're going to get like sweet goodness so we we're trying not to put any shit not any crap into the into the discard pile only great you know, if we put a Void Fist in there, we know we're going to get it straight back. Um, so I think we're actually going to have a birdie actually jump on board in a second. What was that like You're to cast, though, serious. man? Yeah, he's actually uh, going to jump in. He's actually, got to, he's actually got to join us. All right. we, we think. We theorize. But anyway, on air, what was that like? Bert returns to the game of L5R I uh, think... after a three months disappearance. Glenn, you were, you were on the casting catch too, right? <clears throat> No, not for the uh, not for the dragon drag dragon vs dragon game, but uh, we did some casting for the first two Australian first Poland games. I'm not sure if there's any feedback from that. Whether uh, uh, a 24 year old from Melbourne uh, can offer any insight into how to play this game. Are you 24? Uh, I will say. Uh, uh, well, spoiler. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm 24. Uh, oh my god, <clears throat> love it. I uh, probably look thirty. <clears throat> the stress from playing this game at Kotai. <laughs> we, that one game. Me. But uh um yeah, it I I've I think I'm more excited that we seem as an Australian crew we've been able to recruit a diverse number of people for casting moving forward in two weeks, yeah. two and onwards. And uh I hope to try and deliver some really positive quality content moving forward. Uh and hopefully in future we can we can also record the VODs so that those who can't watch live will be able to I think you were um, grooming some new casters right now. Yeah, that's right. And I've only got a 25% error rate on that whole saving the VOD thing. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, yeah, so 
I've set up a uh, Facebook group. Uh, so anybody that's interested, just hit me up and it will be added to a Facebook group if you want to do some casting of World Cup games. Uh, in that, we coordinate what games are kind of on in our time zones, who's playing and that kind of stuff. We've got two lined up, one for tomorrow and one for Sunday night. And we'll see what else we can get between now and then. Yeah, that'd be great. I think one of the great yeah. things is uh, if you're casting a game with Merlin, he's going to be able to, like, he's a veteran <laughs> at streaming. So he's he's, he's going to help you out. So I highly encourage people, if you if you feel like there's an inner commentator inside you, if, like, Richie Benno, like me, was your hero growing up, or Tony Gregg or Bill Laurie, being super regional for those people who aren't, you know, in cricket-loving nations. <laughs> um, you know, you too could one day be the doyen of L5R casting. I don't know. I, I think everything that we've just said about my, you know, streaming abilities is to the contrary. But I appreciate the props, man. <laughs> Mate, I, always love I was, was going to say we are looking for someone current who knows how to say VODs. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. Man. All of this, by the way, is not on our organized schedule for today's cast. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're building anticipation here with, um, with Bert's <laughs> late arrival. Yeah. Um, can I just ask about the Dragon Mirror? Was the breaking point uh, someone just taking the risk that they hit restoration? Or like, how did the conflicts Bert... actually start getting started? Was it like this, this no, big Bert decision? got a Pathfinder's Bert stick, a but... Mm. So that allowed him to make the first attack. But then where the crazy bit goes, right, is because you have three Pathfinders and three let goes in your deck, right? And so we drew our three let goes before QQ drew his three Pathfinders. So we had got rid of all of the opponent's Pathfinder blades, so he couldn't attack. But QQ, being a smart player, then quickly let goes a bunch of random shit we had on the table, like just non-relevant stuff. Because he wanted to make sure that he had his let goes ready to let go our next Pathfinders in his discard pile. So all that he had in his discard pile was two Void Fists, three Pathfinders, and three let goes. <laughs> oh, I think we have a new challenger. Do we have a new challenger? Hello. Are you here, Bert? Hello? Hey! Oh, those sultry hey, pear shaped alive. tones. <laughs> you're alive! So, so Welcome back. <laughs> what is this new setup? Everyone's on video chat. Oh, yeah, man. Well, the yeah. list. Get the, on the it. listeners I know can't you've hear got that. a camera. Do you know what you missed you as well, absolute, mate? Absolute. You absolute perverts. What did I miss? <laughs> you missed our new theme song, but we might we might play it as the outro as well. Yeah, I'm keen keen for that. So we're just talking dragon versus dragon, um, and that like well designed uh, mirror match. Do you want to? Uh, we, we've been rabbiting on about it, but you are the man in the hot seat. Do you want to give us your thoughts on that highly um, delicate, tough-to-play match? Do you mean generally, or are we talking about a specific game well, that was played in the World Cup? Well, we were talking about that game, so maybe start there and then expand to general. Okay. Um, did you get the main key points down? Mm. We got all the key, stro like the main, the main points, but you've probably got some. Interesting insight, anyway. We just talked about, like, discard reshuffling to make sure you've got, like, the right cards in the discard pile because when you've got 30-plus <laughs> was... cards... <laughs> that was just absolutely bonkers. I've never played a game like that before in my life. Have you ever had over 30 cards <laughs> in you your hand played before that game? Have you played, <laughs> played Alphavar before? Who are you, sorry? Like, where have you been? <laughs> well, I hadn't for a while, but um, I got some some much-needed uh, practice in with, with Simkoff um before the game that was invaluable um but yeah we worked out that essentially the entire matchup depends on getting a pathfinder's blade to stick um there are two strategies one of the strategies is you try and get a pathfinder's blade to stick and you mash five bid um which is what most people do which is what in the end i chose to do and then the other strategy is you bid lower and you put no fade on guys and you just face roll turn one um, but I think if your opponent is doing the more conservative strategy of just bidding five and, and waiting for a Pathfinders, then they're just going to crush you because they have more cards in hand. And, and to and be clear for the listeners, beat. the reason why you put no fade on characters is so you're not punished by a feast or famine, right? Yeah, so you don't auto lose to, uh, to a feast. 
I feel like there's a number of like auto lose triggers in that matchup. And it's all based on the province row of just absolutely stupid province row. I th- I think the, the 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 main offender is restoration of balance. That's what caused in that particular game, uh no one attacked for four rounds and QQ didn't attack me until round six. Uh where he did take a, a risk, a basically a fifty percent chance of insta losing the game. He he had to take the gamble at that point. Yeah. So but, but about- yeah, it's like a really wonky game. I mean when it's very high level like that, I did enjoy it. It went to the I think it went about nine or ten rounds. <laughs> And uh was, yeah, nine rounds. It was an insane game. And there was uh there was a lot of considerations like you guys have talked about this, I think, the deck recycle. I was starting to plan which cards were going to get recycled into my deck and how thick my deck was gonna be, which was kind of interesting. <laughs> um but yeah, there was a couple things late in the game that went against me, some RNG stuff, but it was quite close, I thought. I thought I had I was in a very good position for a majority of the game. But I, I haven't played a lot of Dragon personally, so um Yeah, I don't know. They they feel they feel way over the curve in paper on paper. Uh but then when I play them, it doesn't feel like I'm I'm demolishing people unless they get just like auto lost by my province or it just feels like the province has pushed them into that level above everything else. So do you think Which that... I don't think is healthy. So you think that the main challenge in people playing against Dragon is if you haven't practiced that matchup a lot, there's a number of more than other deck types. There's many mistakes you can just make and mistakes plus getting unlucky, right? Yeah. There are, there are certain pitfalls in that matchup that, uh, unlike any other matchup in the game, um, you can throw away all of your equity in a match by making, making a very slight mistake that other other clans just don't have the ability to punish. I think. Um, and then sometimes you just have to take a one in four dice roll. Like every so often you just have to, you know, <laughs> give away a quarter of your equity in the game just by rolling the <laughs> dice, which is really brutal. <laughs> I sometimes feel like when you're about to declare your first attack against Dragon and you've got no way of knowing what their provinces are, the reverse, <laughs> the reverse implied odds are just disgusting. You just gotta like, <laughs> yeah. eat it, eat it. <laughs> I, I, I think with 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 that uh, province row and with magistrate station being in the game, cards like Wayfinder, which are uncounterable, there's no counter to to uh, the Wayfinder right now. That's the best solution for that. Anyway, yep. yeah, that was my experience. Cool. All right, so we've talked about dragon versus dragon for like 15 minutes at least. <laughs> yeah, we can. Uh, yeah, we can move on. So I think. Um, World Cup in general, if you want to like learn more about our thoughts, go to www.hiddencityrollers.com for all of your Hidden City Roller needs and World Cup Roundup. Um, lots of great games going on. Please get involved in the World Cup. Uh, again, if you want to get on the casting scene, go talk to Merlin. He's got a group. He's got that on lock. <laughs> um, what's next? Should we talk about cards? Like new yeah, ones? Yeah. Talk about card. New cards? It's spoiler day, right? Like we happen to cast on spoiler day, so yeah. Yeah, that may be intentional. Um, what's up, Merlin? You wanna you wanna run us through these sweet spoilers? All right. Well, I'll tell you what's not out first. There's no new restricted list. Sorry, oh. <laughs> but we do, have, we do have a couple of spoilers from the Scorpion pack. Um, I'll just we'll just get straight into it, right? We'll start with what I think is probably the worst one: Bayushi's Whispers. Shall I read it out? <clears throat> do it. Do that. All right. Do it. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Studio. Bayushi's <laughs> Bayushi's Whispers is a six cost uh, character with three military, six political skill, and zero glory. It's an informant which cannot have attachments. It has an action during a conflict. Look at an opponent's hand, then name a card. That player cannot play copies of the named card this phase. What do we think about Bayushi's Whispers? So you're saying it's the worst Does card. It have a keyword? Yeah, I don't think it's very informant, good. Right? Informant, right? Informant, man. Sick keyword. Yeah, yeah man. There's, <laughs> there's heaps of synergy. Actually, Almost there's four, as good right? as Wily Trader. 
I'll finish actually on think... what I think is the best spoiler. All right. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I actually think, Bert, you're onto something there. It does feel a bit wily traderish in the sense that, like, you know, it's a card that could maybe work at some point. What I do like about it is that it can't be clouded. And, you know, it's got zero glory, so it always maintains its stats, which is good. It's a good charge target. I mean, obviously, if it had the Shinobi trait, you could out of the shadows it. You can't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so scratch that. You can ambush it, though, right? It's ambushable. You can ambush it. You can charge it. But it's not a great charge target. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, I feel like there's like other cards. Is it really worth the ambush? You're trading three fate for six. It's just like, why not just charge it at that point? I think the effect the the effect is undeniably strong. You can use yeah, it in any sure. conflict. It doesn't have to be there. It's repeatable. Um, it can, it's it can repeatable. Apply to attachments yeah. and actually. and it actually lasts until the end of the phase. So you, if you defend for the first conflict, look at their hand, and you can just say, okay, no no fate worse than death for the whole turn. Um, yeah. It's a strong effect. I think the stat line is good. I think no attachments would be mandatory on something that costs so much. Um, but yeah, I, I worry about its playability. I, I, I just think this is good card design personally. I think it's going to have a deck at some point. But... If it had the courtier trait, would you say it'd be too potent? Yeah. Um, I think it would put it more at the very strong level as opposed to just maybe pretty good. Can I guys, can, sorry, can I let you in on something about this card that you might not know? What's that? Um, if you look at an opponent's hand and see something like a Feral Nino, uh, and then their name Feral Nino, you can actually still play Feral Nino. Oh, you mean put into play, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so yes. This, this, yeah, is, good point. this is one of these abilities which has really strange interactions with other cards so you couldn't so, you couldn't play the character right but you could use the action on the card to put it into play is that what you're saying yeah that's right have that's you ever cool. have you ever played feral Nino against hita kisada because that is fucking hilarious <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah 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 it just completely it's... bypasses kisada's ability <laughs> so good you do lose a tiny tiny bit of tempo but yeah who cares it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> the feral Ningo, the gift that keeps on giving. Well, all right, Glenn, we didn't hear from you. Thoughts? Uh, I think uh, I just think that for zero fate, you can play policy debate and get a better effect off. Um, pretty much <laughs> for <laughs> less cost. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't. I don't really have much else to say about the, the card. I, I would say in future. I mean. If you think about it, maybe there's enough cards now where you can, like, you know, appeal into the fortunes or whatever, where you can cheat it out for not paying anything. But uh, when the Scorpion decks already feel tight and with the rejigging with the new box and different approach to deck building, I'm still not sure this has a place. But if, if, if Alpha Bar turns into a similar to Game of Thrones where you can eventually have these flex slots with these really high cost, um, strong ability characters that are one-offs, you know, you can put like three one-offs that are all really high cost. And just, if you see them, they give you some potential blowout, um, you know, ability, it, it could see play, but I just think, yeah, plus debate cost zero does a better effect and you don't pay anything for it. So, uh, it's stick really, with that one would be my advice. It's a really good target for my ancestors strength that a scorpion. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe. That's right. a deck. The next, no, the next you're already telling us to answer something. That is a deck. <laughs> you're totally going to play that. Shut I up, know Glenn. you're going to play that. Shut at up. Some point. No <laughs> it's more. A deck. I, okay. uh, I like good omen with this. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> what is... Especially like with the new box. If you, you were to you're have literally a whispering. Low, low bid um, scorpion deck with the new box, I think it could be good. Who knows? Now you, you know, I had, I had to... whispers into charge into good omen. <laughs> um, and the only way to get cloud on this is to only mask it first. Thought that was interesting. Oh, <laughs> boom! <laughs> yeah. I think if if, if, case. if your first if your first thought with a new card preview is good omen, I think it's maybe a sign <laughs> of the card. <laughs> what about like Enzi does point out? 
is that it is weak to Oni Mask. <laughs> and yeah, so that's one know. of its one of its. Uh... Wow, this card sucks. Oni Mask. It's a meta bending. Okay. <laughs> hey, any card that makes another card playable, I'm all for. Right. <laughs> I was gonna say though, Chris. Chris, do you think do you think a really good play um, with this card is turn one? You've lost the flip. You've got seven fate. You look down. You're like, you, you know what? I'm gonna spend six and one <laughs> for the fight. She whispers. You're like, this is what I gotta do. This is what I'm gonna do. Ob ob. You know. Snap. Ob. No, Snap. I think I think if you're playing Scorpion, you have enough tricks in your hand to spend that seven fate on that you just pass and get one more. No, it it it, it throws off your opponent. It gives you a beat stick. Um, and it gives you it gives you the informant keyword on the board, which allows you to make incredible plays. Um, Look, after, after enough, all you... the call out cards get made, informant could be really really useful. So, <laughs> yeah. All right, what's next, right. Mills? Oh man, let's see if we can bring it lower than that. Um, <laughs> insolent rival, I think, is the next. Least worst card in the back. <laughs> <laughs> um, Why are you, you like you like adding prejudice to these reviews, mate? You're just already you're criticizing a, the card. You're gonna I don't get know a what the card is. You're yet. gonna get a chance to have a ch- have a say about this card, okay? So it is a three cost, two military, one political character. Dynasty side character. It is a Bushi and a duelist, so you can play test of skill with it. It has yeah. two glory. It gets plus two, plus two if your honor dial is higher than your opponent's. And as an action, while this character is participating in a conflict, choose a participating character controlled by an opponent, challenge that character to a military duel, dishonor the duel's loser. Insolent rival. I'm in love. I love this guy. I tell you why. He is a very handsome man, very handsome card. So obviously you're looking at it, it's understated, but it's Scorpion, and Scorpion stuff is always understated. Like illustrious plagiarist, four cost for a one three. Like you know we've suffered. How dare uh, they? <laughs> we've suffered the us Scorpion players. We never really get well stated characters, but um, maybe Boyushi Liar. But we won't talk about that. Um, so this guy, right? Think about this. Like Scorpion dishonor is a thing in scorpion this scorpion have been known to win via dishonor from time to time um <laughs> sorry bert has just put up california as his video background and it looks ridiculous he's traveling it's like around the world in 80 days <laughs> sorry, um, but this yeah this is going on the internet bert are you trying to Misdirect from talking about this card, mate. Yeah. No, no, no. Something... All right, I'm going <laughs> to defend it. I'm a no, glass half full guy. I didn't have to have my kitchen as the background. <laughs> I'm a glass half full guy. Look, so this is why I reckon it's great. Okay, so say your dude, there are ways of getting military buffs, but say you've got like two higher skill than your opponent, right? And you use this duel versus your opponent on some key character that could potentially get dishonored. What's your opponent going to do? What are they going to bid? Right, so if they bid one and you bid one, their character gets dishonored, and it's a repeatable effect on a character. That seems pretty sweet. Action dishonor a character. All right, say they bid three, because they well, actually they have to bid four if they want to win. Three will just tie if you're bidding one, right? So if they bid four and you bid one, yeah, your guy gets dishonored, but you've just done three points of honor loss to your opponent. Right, which is also pretty good if you're playing Scorpion. So it's very costly for your opponent. Like, worst best case scenario. Well, I don't know what the best case scenario is. The best case scenario that the opponent's character gets dishonored, or that you gain three honor. Like, I don't get why people think this card is bad. It just seems to do lots of good things. Rebuttal. Oh, look, I think. I think all of those points are valid. Also, it has two glory so that it can compete against Senpuku Sato. Enough said, yeah. right? I think, I think Merlin was going to just say it's not good enough because it's not an orange card. It's a red card. Like, mm. you can't, yeah. get, can't get fully invested it in it. There's not, there's, no, um, there's not enough flames on it, mate. <laughs> it's like unicorn it, cards without horses on them. They're just no good. It, I, think, I think you could... Take, you can make the argument for um, 
it's a for greater glory target, um, which you definitely want to splash in Scorpion currently. There's no stronger restricted card. Nah, so that's yeah, true. it offers you the ability it offers you the ability to um put it for greater glory on Shoju and and uh and this guy and just go to town generating fate through through those interactions. <laughs> um <laughs> God, we are just the worst fucking this is, podcast. This is why you tune into us. <laughs> Everybody, if you're playing Scorpion, you must splash for greater glory. Any other card and you're a scrub. You're like uh, a... People are just turning this shit off right now. Right. Right. At least people are playing tier 5 decks, splashing forged. Get out of here. I'm the, I'm the people's hero. Damn. I'm just telling I'm the pipe dream. I, I also thought about, what if you... What if you could run Seal of the Crane? So now you've got all these oh jewelers on board, and then there's like some card that like fires Chiquita off jewelers. Blade, baby. Uh, oh wait, so you can but... splash test a skill and insult to injury. Boom. <laughs> yeah, that's the card. Yeah, Policy you debate is restricted card. Yeah, you can start running that. Yeah, hundred percent. So, so yeah. insult to injury. So this is so when you use insolent rival on a guy, you dishonor them once, and then you insult them and dishonor them again. <laughs> well, no, hang on. Power play. Reverse you synergy. You can, play, you can do that versus Crane. So you can you can remove their honor token oh, no, on their true. honor character, and then you can play insult to injury to then um, get them down to dishonored, and you honor which, switch off which... their voice of honors. Which crane honored crane character is this two one going to be in a duel ever? <laughs> Young like Harrier. Young Harrier. Young Harrier, mate. Young Harrier. I actually like this guy. He he feels pretty fair to me. Like I don't I'm not, when I read him, I don't think oh he's gonna fucking destroy people. But I do I like the design and the ability. I think it's it's okay. It'll see think... playing a certain deck type, maybe. You know he's a good charge yeah, target? Like he's someone you charge? No. Um, no. <laughs> Sorry, I think he's pretty harsh. You want, you want more of a beefcake? You want like an Aramoro Wait, or a Yunako? Can't you charge a Legion of One uh, or charge him, spreading the darkness, and be like, I'm going to win this duel? Like, there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> the more I think about <laughs> the more I think about this dude, the more I'm like, man, why am I just playing unassuming your Jimbos? And like yeah. well, better core card. Because, yeah, because but, this guy, but you know what I mean? Like if yeah. I'm gonna spend my fate in certain things, I don't know. He can switch yeah. on I can swim and give you the, tr- yeah, the targeting nice. the targeting ability, right? So you can sorry, so legitimately play, you can actually dishonor the character you want to kill and get your honor dial at the correct number um in the early game. Yeah. So there is that consideration. And in the at, in the late game, like you either bid higher, sacrificing honor, or your guy gets dishonored. I do think that's strong for a more dishonor focused old box deck. And if you are splashing crane, it makes your noble sacks a little bit more reliable. Just like you know, a small amount more reliable. Well, yeah, he's all right. There's a there's a bushy box coming out, so I guess you know yeah. we shall see. Right. All right. What's up next? All right, Ignoble Enforcers. It is a five-cost character, four military, four political, one glory, Bushi. It has a reaction. After you play this character, you may lose up to three honor. We know how much Scorpion loved to lose honor. <laughs> each For each honor lost by this ability, put one fate on this character. I love this character. End. <laughs> <laughs> mic, mic drop. This character speaks for itself. Right, uh, what's, we didn't hear from what's you, his mate. What's his keywords again, sorry? Oh, we didn't hear from me. I, um, you know, you probably didn't want to hear what I had to say about the insolent rival anyway. <laughs> what about the <laughs> noble one? He just gives you a bit of redundancy alongside of Maze of Illusion to set up those good omens after bidding five. <laughs> so, <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> if, uh, if you really want to play these whispers, you gotta pack the uh, insolent rival maze good omen package, and and then you're off to the races. It's so great that they've shown you how to build a deck just from these two cards. We've been spoiled. So. <laughs> and what's Amazing. that's why they call him the Inceptor. What's um what's going on mm. with this uh, ignoble though? This new dude that Merlin just spoiled. Uh, the new guy. Look, I uh, I think in my notes I thought that I actually liked him. Um, yeah. 
He's... Why spend fate when you can spend honor? I mean, yeah, he's like fine, he's right? like the upgraded wandering Ronin, but like a lot better because he's actually <laughs> efficient for money. So I think you could see some play. What's his, his keyword? Sorry, Bushi. Bushi. He's Bushi. So I dig him. Oh, this means you can play right in the streets in your row, Ben. <laughs> like, Mate, you could do that like expansions ago. <laughs> it was totally illegal. <laughs> right alongside massing at Twilight. I will never forget. I will never forget that moment after Kotai when we were a little bit hammered. <laughs> and I just look over and he's got fucking Shoju defending a ride in the streets. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, my <laughs> what the fuck road? is going on? Yeah. <laughs> Next to a massive though. Was it um, fighting in the streets, you street to street, where all your followers would jump off your characters and act as independent characters? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that was pretty good. So, oh, so with, with, this new, with this new guy, you basically get three good omens in your deck for free, right? You're like, all right, well, let's give up free, free they card draws. Yeah. yeah, no, no. no that's what I'm saying. Like, like, you just like, like, had good omens. Favorite. You're like, all right, like, I'll lose three on our... Draw three cards less and... Uh, and uh, it's just a huge advantage. Like, so if, imagine if Crab had a character. It's just one thing. Just one thing to, yeah, I agree. So one thing to note about this dude, right? Dude. Is you first turn him under new box. New box, you start with nine honor, and you need to be at six honor or less for it to do its full effect for in Kaiden Boyushi. So it means first turn, you play this dude, you react, lose three honor, you're at six, your box is straight away on. Bam. Man, and I feel like if you do you, that in a game of L5R, you're just going to lose. Because no, <laughs> think about this, though, right? He's, he's, your, he's your shitty answer to Knit and Master. Because then you first turn, take a province, unbow him, take a second province, boom. And you've still got, like, at least three fate, potentially four or five yeah. fate, to do other stuff with that turn. Like, I think he's great. Like, come on. Like, multi-province taking turn one. My big concern with this guy, uh, I think the effect is kind of nice, but my big concern with him is that if you're spending at least five fate on something, you really want it to do something that impacts the board or players' hands or has some powerful ability. And Scorpion Dynasty has like a lot of really good characters in it already. And if you're just getting a blank 4-4, it's essentially a blank 4-4 with a cost reduction, which is a pretty good cost reduction. I just don't know if it does enough. We'll need to see what other um, bushy synergistic stuff they get. I think, I think it's I think it's more a deck where you're trying to... I think it's one of those decks that is trying to break the control meta where you're more trying to push uh, attacks more frequently. And so being able to leverage the fate advantage uh, for Honor in like turn two or three where you're about to break on box anyways, it, it makes it really hard for the opponent to then have an answer where it's like, oh, well... Now I've got to block another four four for two more turns, and I have to expend resources to do that. Um, whereas you didn't have to do that; you just had to spend five, and then and then you've got a four four for three rounds or four or four rounds. Really, it, it just doesn't fit into the current control decks that you see from out of Scorpion. But if it, you're playing it with new, see what the new deck will do. Yeah. If you're playing with the new Stronghold and you're playing three copies of it, can you still play Assassination? Can you still play Forged Edict? Probably, probably not playing Edict in that deck. I'm just trying to think. Like the, the the honor cost is serious if you're not playing old box. But you can put just one. You can put just two fate on it, right? Like you can just lose two honor. You don't. You don't have to lose three. You don't. You don't have to be like maximum value. Yeah, every time. but then I. But yeah. then I'm not sure. Like for each point below three. Like for each point below the maximum that you don't use in this, I'm not sure he's he becomes less and less worth it. I think you want to if you're playing him, you want to be using him to his max most of the time. You can mix and match too, right? Like you can play him with one fate and then lose two honor for two more fate. Yeah, yeah. Right. All right. Okay. Shall Next we? Card. All right. So this one came, I think, from the French FFG site, as lots of good spoilers do. It is. Soshi Aoi? Am I saying that right? Can you say it's that a... again, Melon? <laughs> Not without a glass of water first, sorry. <laughs> it's a three cost, two military, three political Shigenja air character with one glory. It has an ability 
best ability in the game as far as I'm concerned. Lose one honor and choose a character you control. Choose one. Until the end of the phase, the chosen character gets plus one military uh, and the Bushi trait or plus one political and the courtier traits. Obviously not the best ability in the game. The best ability in the game is still Tadaka. <laughs> but it's fucking yeah. good. It's really good, <laughs> right? Like this this card has so much depth to it. Uh, it's we could go on for hours. Do you know what? When that, I saw this card, I just thought go. Chris Ends is going to love it. It's combo rific. <laughs> Ends, what are your what are your top yeah, twenty ideas call. on what to do with this card? Uh, let's come back to me in a second. I need to find the uh, the English version again. Okay. Um, so can we just talk about that now? Now you can charge your Bayushi Whisperers, make it a Bushi, and then for greater glory. Yeah. And now, yeah. so now, now you can actually. Let it's all coming together. Of <laughs> it's all about the Whisperers. <laughs> you guys doubt me, but for greater for greater glory, yeah, Scorpion. Um, I don't know. Like I feel like there's potential there. The, the problem is that five fires or Mono no Oare will just come back in. I, I in hate face. to say this, but I but think you, you can make it a bushy. I hate to say this, but I think uh, Good Omen sounds like a better idea. <laughs> <to me. laughs> Do you know what? I reckon. I reckon Johnny Shen has probably already got a deck like that assembled. He's like, ah. Oh, mm. What can I do with these scorpion cards? <laughs> the so Shenster. The dream is you could charge a Maro, you could charge that five costa that's a Bushi, and you could charge um, this chick or whatever, um, and then you can for greater glory and just be like, this is great. I spent two of my restricted card. Oh, I can't. Yeah, wait. I, can I? Yeah, I can. Wait, I can't charge him for Grand You can't Lord, charge can him for no. Grand They're both on the list. <laughs> I just keep cheating. That's the issue. Those are the, those are the glory so, days, man, when you can do that. I, I do feel like... Well, I've just taught, I've taught people how to game lose for like five minutes there. It's just education <laughs> on how to go to a tournament and not have a great time. Yeah. I think if you take this the greater shit. glory off the restricted list, Lion be, go from trash tier to unchained. Hmm. But All right, well, let's crash talk here to let's like talk tier some... 1.5. This, let's I mean, some... they would still get thrashed by Dragon, right? <laughs> anyway, you were saying, Melon? Yeah. I, I just wanted to get out a couple of legit combos. Right. Uh, so <laughs> you put you put this person you put this person on the table, uh, and what? So you've got her. She can become a courtier, and she can turn on your four shames and uh, forged edicts and things like that. She happens to be on the table. Maybe she's spent in a conflict. You have tons of fate because that's what Scorpion do. You drop down a um, unassuming Yajimbo. You give that bloody courtier, and now it can go in and play Four Shames and Forged Edicts. Um, what else? I don't know. I uh, like her just... turning on, well, turning off Breach against you, so you can use her. That um, seems so amazingly corner case. <laughs> turning on <laughs> Reach of Etiquette. Yeah, but like, I don't know. We're reaching, we're it reaching, can... boys. Chris, that's not what we're about, mate. We're not about corner cases. <laughs> oh, I think I've stumbled into the wrong podcast then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was thinking, hang on, aren't we about corner cases? That whole fucking shit. <laughs> I think we're about playing two restricting cards in decks. I've just. I've committed the sim cop error of 2018. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm never going to live that down. Nope. <laughs> Have we got any more? That's it? Spoilers? Well, well, can I just say, on this, breach one. on this three drop, just before we move on, Yeah, I think it's... um, In a vacuum, it's kind of a weak card, I think. But if there are enough powerful effects that require traits, like going forward, this is going to be a nice filler character that can help smooth out your like lower your variance when you draw in all of your uh courtier cards and you don't flip one or all of your bushi cards vice versa so maybe going forward if there are enough powerful polarized effects for those keywords then it will be pretty good but i'm not not sure if it's there now the action right so you can give herself courtier or give her yeah so but like one honor isn't like the the honor costs are starting to add up yeah. At some point, you've got to decide, do I want to give three dudes a trait spread over three turns, or do I want to assassinate a high-value target, you know? Mm. All right. 
So it, I think it also because it's Shikendra, it turns on cloud, and um, I found in Scorpion, especially in the more aggro decks, you don't often see your Cortia every turn. So it is good to be able to just turn on um, four GDX more for, more consistently. Cool. So just before we get into our favorite listener question segment, I am going to put Bert on the spot right now. Mate, it's been a while. I want an update. Australia versus French in the next season of Was Discord Loot. You've been dodging, dodging me on DM. Putting you on the spot. <laughs> What's up, sir? Well, regarding the Australia v France tournament, I've been trying to to organize with the French. Uh, it just seems I think they were telling me that like two of them are dads and they're on school holidays or some crap. They get, they gave me some some uh, reason. But um we were we were supposed to do it first week of September. Um, but now with World Cup Fury on, it's kind of, I don't know, we're trying to work out when the best time is to actually play that tournament out. Um, and as for new Aussie Discord League, uh, I think we'll announce another one in the next day or two. Um, people are pretty exciting. thirsty for more games. So, yeah. That I'm not sure exciting. what sort of uh, what sort of um, slant it will we'll be on the event, whether we do something special again or if it's just a regular season, but it should be a lot of fun. Mate, on behalf of all of Australian Discordians, we are slavering at the bit. Pretty excited. Wicked. Um, we do appreciate all the effort you put into actually getting those things up and running. Um, right. So we've still got a little bit of time left. So I think that the listener questions, we've got a few. Have you got them there, Merlin? I do have listener questions. All right. Yeah. Um, I have them. I'm happy to, uh, to give our listeners some credit yeah, yeah let's let maybe let's let glenn run through them he's our like he's our community manager really social media manager <laughs> he's outreach he's our outreach program uh, by all means Go so <clears throat> outreacher who contacted us first number one is frotop uh he asks the very important question of which flash benefited the most from the elemental cycle and how will european mm. players Still managed to misuse it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The bias. Well, I've got no answers to that question, so I'll let someone else answer I, it. I, I have an answer. Uh, Hawk Tattoo, Dragon Splash, got the biggest boost because up until that point, Fury was restricted and people were playing Wanderers, which is like good but not great card, but, but Hawk Tat's the uh, bullshit overpowered over the curve card, so I think Dragon Splash got the most out of the arc in terms like, of serious answers i'm not sure what other cards are really like making a dent i feel like um soul beyond reproach uh as a splash for phoenix that feels have you had a shot at that uh merlin phoenix expert yeah i played i've played uh quite a few games with that and i enjoy it and it is it is a deck that can be played you know at an event and you can take wins off people but it's it's probably not the it's not the most powerful thing in the world, but it is a lot of fun. It lets me play my champion again, which I'm pretty happy about. What about you, Edzy? What's what's a what's a great splash like a splash that's now got some real muscle to it, like strength of my ancestors? Has that made lion splash just that much more awesome? I I really like that. That's the kind of jank I like to play, um, <laughs> but I haven't had enough of a chance, so. Yeah, I'm going to have to just go with the dragon and uh, be boring. You know what I think, actually? Um, I think Phoenix Splash got better. I think I see a bit more of that going around. I mean, there was definitely one out of Scorpion that was playing uh, Phoenix Splash, but I'm starting to see like Phoenix Splash out of Dragon and some other stuff. Well, I like Phoenix Splash out of uh, Crane now because they've got Keeper of Air, so they can just mm. do the crazy... Um, was it Seeker of Air put the, again? Put the air ring back in. Yeah, Seeker of Knowledge. Yeah, put the air ring. Um, no, just attack any any uh, ring and trigger air, or have an air on it, and get your keepers. So, hmm. cool. All right. What's yeah. next, Glenn? Um, I just wanted to say I actually think Lion Splash got a big boost only because now someone there's a clan that actually wants to play that as their splash. Um, before or it wasn't really the most strong splash because there wasn't any attachment control but the Frotop I guess popularized that Phoenix Lion deck 
that a lot of us have been messing around with behind the scenes as well. Um, it's just great to see that have a home, I guess. Um, yeah. So that was my thought. <clears throat> yeah, Bill, um, Bill Krillis. So moving on um, to... He, he, um, he played it in the World Cup recently, and I know, um, you know, we occasionally, us rollers here, we'll, we talk to the Greeks every now and then, and I've definitely seen, um, well, I think he's technically a Cypriot, so I wouldn't want to confuse the two. Probably get myself in trouble. <laughs> um, but I'm yeah. pretty sure he's just doing that to slink into the World Cup. Ah. Cheeky European countries. With <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, the, so that was... Is the splash they're misusing the, uh, the nationality? Is that what you're saying? Is that the answer <laughs> to the Frotop second part of the question? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. Uh, so Ray Dent, our uh, local Australian listener who loves to ask questions. Uh, he's asked two questions. So again, Ray, we're going to just take one of your questions. Good evening. Uh, oh, that's not fair. Nathan, Nathan, welcome to the listener question. We're, we're uh, at the list category. of questions second. We've got West Coast Roller. You've entered, you've entered at the best time for it. You've entered at the best time a question from Ray Dent. Uh, well, okay, Merlin's asked me to, we're going to give him two this week. So the first question oh, is... Yeah, he is a VIP. Uh, hey, guys. <laughs> hey, guys. Ray Dent wants to know, hey, guys, why is Glenn so salty? Frame from answering, because uh, I guess salty <laughs> thinking about that. This is actually a question, but... So, Glenn, uh, over to you. Well, I, I don't think I need to defend myself. I don't think I'm high for <laughs> a tree meek. Sounds that's like a salty what the question is asking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even defend myself. <laughs> There's no, there's no salt. There's only, uh, you know, uh, I like to think thoughtful suggestions or insights that often will be incorrect, uh, as well as uh, decisions or thought, lines of play or deck constructions that I feel like, you know, uh, viable or unviable, depending on which cr- clan you're playing. For instance, if you want to protect the crab clan, for example, I think I'd just like to jump in a time machine uh, and when that clan pack is rumored for 2019, uh, I'll go to 2021 when I think FFG will actually release it. And there I'll get to experience Crab Clan again. Uh, so hopefully that gives some insight into that question. Not salty in the slightest. <laughs> They'll probably be renamed the Salt Clan by that point. <laughs> they salt. They do. Yeah. They'll play salt mines yeah. instead of iron mines. What, the, what does the salt mine holding do? The question. Um, it, it says, <laughs> your it says like, sense? reveal the opponent's hand if there's a hawk tattoo, concede the game. <laughs> fair, fair, fair card. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I can I can kind of answer this question. Why is Glenn so salty? I think that his so- level of salt is actually proportional to the amount of punishment he takes when he plays L five R. To be to be fair to him, um, he's the only person I've ever seen someone play a single game where he lost seven Maze of Illusion flips. So that was pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, he told I me recently that. Game. I still played the game. I didn't. I didn't yeah, you I didn't almost won. Salty. I took it. I took it. I took it like a champ. I took that. I took that. Took that loss, and I. I thought about how I could play better in future, and so I flipped see, a coin see, a this... thousand times. And I just was like, "Man, I'm getting better at guessing heads and tails." This game there. This sort of this. What you're seeing here, viewers and listeners, is celebrity Glenn. He's presenting himself to the world. What you don't see is. The the uh, ranting and raving messages we get in Discord about how if he, as soon as he sees a hawk tattoo now in Jagoku, he instantly concedes the game. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I don't want to be they're... dragged through the game just like my character was dragged to the conflict. It's uh, <laughs> it's as simple as that. I feel. Let's face it. Everybody has a hawk tattoo, right? Like I hear there are some players that just go mental over Kikyo, you know, when that gets played. <laughs> No, I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> and to be to be fair with regard to this question, I actually, when I first read it, I thought it said, why is Glenn so sultry? And I'm like, yeah, why is Glenn so sultry? <laughs> yeah, I can see that, I've got to be honest. <laughs> but it just, definitely has nothing um, to do with, like, Lion Clan and, and their, their glory count and <laughs> those kinds of things, yeah? Not, no hot topics at all. <laughs> All right. What, what do we it has nothing to do with the fact that the the clan I happen to be had a motor of is like nowhere to be seen in the competitive scene. I'm just like, <laughs> well, like my favorite clan, the Defenders of the Wall. You know, it's kind of like they're on budget cuts and they're like, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna lose. 
to get up on that wall with my walking stick and I'm gonna bat the demon with my walking stick so <laughs> I'm not getting cards not fast enough to defend the wall. There's a conservative but empire in place and they've put and we'll austerity again. measures in place um, so that they can afford the tax cuts for the Crane Clan, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the wily, the, the more wily, the more wily traders we get, the uh, the better our outcomes will be uh, through J trade. Um, so, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, Raiden asks a really great second question. He asks, uh, so if AEG was to announce that all clans were restricted to their nearest role for worlds, how do you think that might affect the top eight? Um, Ooh, so, if a, if a random corporation. Yeah, if a random corporation can influence <laughs> FFG, um, that would be an amazing start. But I guess, Ray, you meant FFG. Uh, so we'll go with we'll go with that presumption. Uh, the newest roles, what do you guys think? I think that's a really great question. Um, I think it would dumpster crab. It'd be interesting because crab, crab, crab have the option of playing uh, Earth. It's, it's, it's a really diverse, you know, we're used <laughs> to playing Earth, we're familiar with it. There's that. There's just knowing which restricted cards via elemental lock you're allowed to play. Um, so, so there's a lot of advantages there through crab. I feel so crab might see crab actually might see a victory at the top table. Can confirm. Not salty at all. <laughs> These two questions really rolled into each other quite well. I think. <laughs> I actually think I actually think Phoenix got a really good boost um, from their new role. Yeah, I think wrong, definitely but... Phoenix would go up up in the yeah. rankings. I think the old role is still fine. Like I I feel like you couldn't fault anybody for playing either of those, but they're both Dragon Splash, kick the car car out of people, really early kind of decks. I don't think it would make a difference if they had to lock them to their new role. Dragon would definitely take a hit, I think. Although the Keeper deck with Unicorn Splash is still quite strong. Um, Phoenix doesn't lose much. I think Scorpion would take a big hit. Scorp probably wouldn't be in the top four at Worlds. It's a good question. I mean, it's in Crane. That... I think Crane would, gain. Crane would gain a boost as well, right? Yeah. Crane's... What did Crane get? Keeper of... Keeper Air, man. They still get Keeper Air. Air. Keeper yeah, I think. It's an interesting question because this is going to be the landscape post worlds, right? This will be the primary roles. Yeah. So true. It's something to think about for sure. Well, there's right. always two hey. roles though, right? I mean, hypothetically, there'll, this question. Not so from much. this point going forward, yeah. Well, so far. There'll be, at... there'll be there'll be a gap there's a gap between worlds and the new year. So like January first is when the roles from worlds will kick in alongside right. the current yeah. second role that each clan has. It's very simple. As as uh, Jay Throne Podcast says, it's a very simple process, and we all clearly understand how so, FFG has chosen to implement this. Which have you thought about which role you're going to choose, but um, Merlin? So I think because we're going to get oh, three Australian yeah. roles, right? Yeah, that's right. Don't don't make me say it. Don't make me say it. I, my clan will disown me if I say it. All right, let's let's maybe keep keep a few things under wraps oh yeah it's a big secret that phoenix wants seeker avoid guys <laughs> yeah. Yeah. not all not all phoenix and bert's gonna uh, you're gonna maybe? you're gonna win in straight sets with uh, lion right worlds so what's up i fucking hope not because <laughs> 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 i uh there's a listener question uh later that will tell you why i hope not but uh i'd like it if lion won why not all right yeah. Let's let's let's, let's, already uh, let's, picture, mate. let's not get greedy. We've got a fat episode. So let's keep Edwin moving. Us. Since Edwin we got Merlin, really... how does he feel about Lion post HMT? Because Merlin and I built a deck on the weekend, and we thought it was quite decent. Are you asking me? Uh, yeah. I still think it's tier two. Personally, I think against players who have experience playing the matchup, they can tame the lion. Um, pretty easily actually depending on the clan i think you can kind of be a flat track bully you can really ra railroad people who aren't aware or or who don't have much experience or who, or who who you have a huge skill edge over but if you get to a cut you're just going to get scrubbed out i think most of the time mm. right mm. okay cool um yeah edward pierce asked us a really great question this week thanks Eddie Eddie uh he says g'day rollers how have you found the stronghold store kits um, how we found the OP landscape for this game going uh, through its first year. 
Well, Nathan's you know, over at WA, so he's probably got a very different perspective to us spoiled Melbourne brats. Has has all of the price support been over in uh, Western Australia, which probably more closely resembles most of the sparse metas that our listeners are a part of? Uh, yeah, fine. We did. We finished off um, a tournament last week at one of our stores. Only two stores are doing the kits. Um, we're hoping to get a third on. But anyway, so we just finished only the last season's gear um, last week. So that was like for the four play mats and, and that stuff with all the clan champions yeah. on them. Um, that was good. It was a good time. So we still get sort of 10 to those and it waxes and wanes depending on, on the season and people's moods and occupations and everything else. But um, so they're all getting the new ones in for next month. So at the moment we haven't touched on the new new kits, but um, yeah, as I said, they'll be coming up in the next sort of three or four weeks. Are players happy with the price book? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, for the most part, the, the prize support is what most of us want to see. Um, a lot of the stores will do that coupled with like store credit for some of the entry fees and stuff. Um, but I think for the most part, you know, we're happy to, to just see the the price of what come through, just getting the full bleeds and the cool little tokens and that kind of merchandise is I think just what people want. It's like something unique. Like most of us are, are a more mature crowd that play the game. You know, we've also for the most part got jobs and stuff and can afford to not worry so much about store credit and that, which is not to say people shouldn't, but um, we really enjoy it. Like it's quite competitive. People are really keen to get that gear. Um and it makes a makes it just a good experience to get it, I think. And it's, we've got a pretty good diversity as well. Like, I don't think anyone has won all the time. Um, and it's sort of got a good spread of, of top four each, each tournament. Nice. All right. I think um I think I think I'd say because I, I think I play <clears throat> I play a few of the FFG games. I'd say the OP is way ahead of the other FFG games that are currently out. Um, going to a regular or fortnightly tournament and getting quite solid loot um, for five or ten dollars entry is fantastic. Uh, for Star Wars Destiny, paying ten dollars and getting one single card uh, mm. for showing up is just—it's just really, really uh, disappointing. To be honest, it's just like I'm just like, wait, where's my five cards that I'm used to from Alpha R? They all look beautiful. Um, you know, and even for instance, nationals for Destiny is going to cost fifty dollars, um, and you don't get guaranteed much at all. As opposed to L five R Kotai was twenty, and we got a playmat and like a, a whole heap of cards. Um, I think FFG are hitting it out of the park with the um, with the OP so far. I'm quite impressed. Cool. All right, let's keep moving on. Any other listening questions? Um, so Mika Elliot asks if Lion wins world, will Burst Tattoo be Google Eye Lion or non Google Eye Lion? <laughs> I can't believe that you fuckers out in the Discord world are holding me <laughs> to these ridiculous claims that I that I make. Uh, this one was I said on stream that if Lion won worlds, I'd get a tattoo of a lion on my ass and it wouldn't be on just one cheek it would be spread across <laughs> my ass such that the crack would be the center of the tat. Uh, so it, <laughs> you know what uh if lion win worlds then i've got more to worry about uh than the state of the the lion's eyes i'll probably have to pay some pro tattooers to do a nice job Shit, I might have to change clans i might have to play lions and <laughs> does that yeah, mean so you're, you're listening out there does that mean your taint is the Uber? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean, there are so many possibilities, right? You can really get artsy with it. Yeah. All right. Um, so Nathan Bud asks, uh, you're on the stream as well, mate, but you've asked a really <laughs> great question here. Great question. Uh, <laughs> uh, each roller should give us one golden rule for deck construction. So, uh, Simkoff, do you want to start us off with a with a golden rule for deck construction? And it can't be two restricted cards in your deck. <laughs> well, that was my first choice. Um, very, very simple one. Before you choose a single card in your deck, go, what is my primary victory condition? What is my secondary victory condition? That's it. Know what they are before you start working out what you, is in your deck. How am I winning the game? All right, that's it. Great. It's a good answer. Uh, it's a great question, by the way. 
Yeah. Um, Merlin, what are, what are your thoughts? Uh, when you're looking at a card and deciding whether to include it in your deck, you look at it and you say, uh, do I want to see this early game or mid game or do I just not care at all? And if you want to see it early, include three. If you want to see it mid, include two. And if you don't really care if it comes up or not, include one or zero. Great. Uh, Bert? I would say decide if your deck needs to defend or attack early and cater your your list around that objective. Most decks these days defend for the first couple turns. Um, so think about that. And also... Uh, most people will say, oh, don't forget your auto includes, like court games or bonsai or whatever. But I would say, um, think about the cards in your deck that are going to be your point of difference. They're going to give you an edge in certain, you know, um, situations and decide what those are and how you maximize the use out of those. So for me, I'm playing a 45 card conflict deck in the World Cup with a bunch of uh, mantras. And that, I decided that I couldn't win the, the World Cup playing regular dragons. So I went for some janky shit. So just make some decisions like that uh, straight away when you decide what's the theme of your deck going to be. Um, Chris? Yeah, I like to include something in every deck that's going to make my opponent make my mistakes or give them some kind of fit. So like Watch Commander, um, Aegis Crone, like that kind of jank. Like don't play it if it doesn't fit, but if you can, have something that is going to throw people off their game and make their math not work properly. And also put three, don't leave home without three good omens. <laughs> oh, look, let's not say crazy things. That goes uh, Do you want to Nathan... see an early game or mid game? <laughs> you want to see an all game, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nathan, you, you've just been officially in, inundated into the rollers. Would you like to answer your own question? Do you have a golden rule for listeners? Golden rule for listeners? Um, well, since the quality of the question is so high, um, <laughs> I think I'd have to give my, my best possible advice, and, and that would be to just pay extra close attention to your fate curve as a very basic rule. Make sure that yep. your conflict deck is not just flooded with high-cost stuff that's amazing, and reconsider, um, like, outwit versus for shame, for example. Three versus one is a huge gap. Cool. Yeah. That's a good answer to your own question there, Nathan. Do you know what? Well I feel like our collective knowledge, we must be pretty awesome. But I'll, like, just list them down. I feel like that could be a blog post. And if you're interested in other blog posts by the collective knowledge of Hidden City Rollers, make sure you check out www.hiddencityrollers.com where everyone here has the chance to blog about this stuff. Glenn? I'm glad you I'm glad you, you plugged before I gave my advice because <laughs> people don't, really don't want to read it. <laughs> <laughs> it's in their bookmark now. <laughs> my, my advice, my advice is, to is to don't go the route that I read my advice. My advice is don't do what I do where I look at a card and go, I'm putting a deck around that card. Like that's just what's gonna happen. So so there's the um you know, there's the test of skill uh, scorpion deck that I played for a bit. I was just like, weapons, test of, uh, sorry, time for war, time for war in scorpion. And I just was like, all right, weapons, weapons into scorpion. And like, I don't know what my conflict or density deck, I'm just going to shove 40 cards in. And one of them is time for war. And uh, we just go from where, we just go from there. Um, maybe it's best to think as uh, Ben says in, Build your think about your win condition first, and then use cards that help advance those win conditions. I will say that I personally prefer having forty-one, just that extra one, one of seems to make a difference sometimes. Whether it be a route, um, and an outwit, or some, or like even you know some sort of cards that, that can blow you out on a on a key play can when I played, can be useful. I played a got. Uh, a while back, the first edition of Agot, there was this dude called Bruno who used to win lots of tournaments and he would always play 41 card decks or like one extra card. 61, I think it was he, in those days. He used to play 63 card decks, 63. that guy. He was yeah. an absolute phenom. Yeah, he's amazing. Anyway, uh, I think we've got I, one I more question. I think the last point is yeah. uh, read the card. <laughs> read the card. <laughs> so RTFC, one, bro. Sometimes RTFC. I forget to do it during games as well as during deck building. Um good yeah right. and read the restricted list that's the other one I, <laughs> huh? yeah. what's that 
<laughs> get three get three people to look over your deck before you um, submit it for play. Because uh, I, I infamously had a deck on Jagoku that has six needed masters, and I didn't understand why. Was it valid? I just, I just told everyone that I played against the it's Jagoku's fault, not mine. <laughs> Turns out when the fourth needed master shows up, you're going to be in a bit of trouble with your opponent. Um, yeah, uh, so I guess we'll end with a question from our friend Clint, who asks Oracle of Stone, yay or nah? And the reasoning nah. behind it. Um, Clint, thank you for your question. Uh, uh, it's a, it's an interesting one for sure. I think we've I think uh, many people have discussed the potential and power level of this card in future, as drawing cards can offer a lot of um, you know high tempo advantage for because you're not paying honor to draw the cards. The issue is I found is that my, when opponents play it against me, they let me draw into my answers um, for not as much gain. Um, but yeah, time will tell how good that card, you know, the ceiling on that card is quite high. Those are my thoughts. My quick one I'll put in, I'm sure Merlin's got lots of thoughts as an actual Phoenix player. I think in Phoenix, it's amazing. Um, if you're playing Tadaka, cause like if you've got Tadaka out and you play Oracle of Void, then the opponent has to put two cards into the discard pile, which is potentially two more cards they can't play. So or it's duplicates of cards that are already in their bin. So I think it's not too bad if you're playing Phoenix. And then obviously, if you're one of those sort of like Dishonored decks playing um, backhanded compliment, it can help you search for the close. But I do agree, don't play this card in anger because really you're just giving your opponents answers. Anyone else got any thoughts? Um, Bad card. <laughs> yeah, don't I mean, don't don't spend a card to give you and your opponent exact same effects. Yeah, I'm I'm in the nay category for pretty much that reason as well. It's it's it feels good, but you fail to realize that it also feels good for your opponent. They're like, sure, I will totally customize my hand. <laughs> give it. It's it's All for right. a deck five years from now when combo becomes viable. Right now, it's yeah. just just don't play it. All right. So. Well, so um... Quick fire questions that are just before we wrap up, we should just fire off these because I think we should address them this week. Uh, Darren asks us, are you paying royalties to Troll 5R for using their segment? Which segment? Where are you is getting that? these questions from, man? Uh, <laughs> listeners <laughs> questions. We're clearly not looking at the same <laughs> you mean, I, think, <clears throat> I think he means listener questions. Oh, all right. Um, so, so, wait, wait. Are we yeah, saying yeah, that yeah. Troll 5R is the first ever radio show, podcast, TV show ever? To have listener questions. Is this what we're saying? This is what we're, we're establishing. Saying that, wait, but we're saying that Darren went down to the patent office and he said to them, he said, knock, 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 knock. He's like, guys, L5R podcasts need to patent the listener question component. <laughs> what can you do about it? And they looked at him and they went, they went, mate, like, we're really sorry, but um, you've missed that boat by 50 years. Uh, so, no, we're not paying royalties <laughs> and uh, we'll continue this segment. Do you uh, think the Darren... other question that Mark, yeah. Mark Armitage, oh, right. sorry, Ben, you go. I was just uh, saying, I'm pretty sure like, left. Abraham Lincoln, when he was doing stump speeches on literal stumpers, did ask for like listener questions. So like it's been <laughs> yeah. around for I think <laughs> actually think the philosophers when they had their stones in their hands, like Socrates and shit, they actually asked for like people who were around them, like, we got any questions. So Darren, I think you're living up to your name. You're a troll and you represent your podcast well. <laughs> I've got to be honest, I'm, I'm half inclined now to listen to their podcast again and just see how many segments we can rip off. <laughs> Dude, we're gonna, we're gonna oh, wait, wait. We have to have the segment where we tell everybody how amazing we are as a L5R player and everyone else is trash. <laughs> so, so we'll, we'll plug Troll 5R right now. If you want to go to a tournament and come second, you should listen to that podcast. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> Burn. Uh, uh, so I Mark, think I'd be I was coming on here and we'd be declaring war. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're going to get assassinated in the street, so man. Mark Come on. Armitage, uh, Mark Armitage, our friend from Wales, uh, asked a really uh, great follow-up question. He says, if you listen to my Mark podcast... By the number of Hatamotos they have as members, how many would you have to go through 
before reaching troll five R. Oh, I Mate. love Mark. Mate, sick burn. <laughs> um, That's right. a great needle. Well so, done, Mark. So, Mark, Mark, you'll find on our blog later, uh, hiddencityrock.com. We'll compile that list <laughs> for you. You're going to put that list on? Brilliant. We should Brilliant. have Baz do the stats. Run the numbers on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we better go to the Imperial <laughs> Advisor. <laughs> so... Is is um, is Glenn Tupac in like Darren as Biggie? You know, it's like a <laughs> East Coast West Coast thing. Yeah. We actually we, we love. I actually really love the Shop of Our guys. Yeah, me too. Uh, so if you're listening, uh, don't rub the salt in too much. Just keep <laughs> just keep putting that volcanic troll in your decks. That's all I'll say. We throw shade, but it's full of love. Um, this is our just, longest podcast just... ever. Yeah. <laughs> It's the, uh... That's because we didn't use chess clocks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, I think we're pretty much wrapped now. Um, any quick final words? <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to throw to my lovely wife, who's going to sing our theme song. Is that it? Oh, I can't wait. All Is right. this going to be live, Ben? No, it's pre-recorded. Everyone's okay. already heard it. Awesome, we're just doing it awesome, for you. Awesome. All right. Thanks everyone, and we'll he l- let you. Uh, We'll catch you next week. Thanks, bye bye. Thanks, everyone. Cheers, bye. Well, I don't know why I'm listening tonight. I got a feeling that the cards just ain't right. I'm so salty, must not give in to rage. And I'm wondering what those rollers will say. Scarves still left of me, but cheers to the right. Here I am, gonna roll. Derby tonight. Gonna roll a derby tonight. Gonna roll a derby tonight.